Hello, welcome back. I now want to talk about something that's called the LaSalle invariant set theorem. And this is a result that's very useful for proving asymptotic stability of uh, systems using Lyapunov functions. Um, it's particularly useful when studying mechanical systems or electrical systems, uh, this type of thing. Um, so we're just going to start off by uh, with a, a simple motivating example, and we're going to revisit this uh, pendulum that we saw before, except now we've added some damping. So the equations of motion are exactly the same when written in our standard form, except we have this additional damping term. So we have a damping coefficient c uh, that depends on the angular velocity of the pendulum, but otherwise everything's exactly the same. And we're now just going to try and run our Lyapunov uh, theorem arguments and try and prove that v dot is strictly less than zero. Remember, that's what we needed to prove asymptotic stability, and we're going to run into a little bit of trouble, as you're about to see. So, as before, we're going to pick our Lyapunov function to be equal to the energy function. Um, and as we saw last time, this is just mgl1 minus cos x1, the potential energy, plus the kinetic energy, which was a half m l squared x2 squared. And we saw before um, that the gradient of v was just equal to mgl sine x1 and ml squared x2. And now um, we also know that it's the Lyapunov function is equal to zero at the equilibrium point at the origin, and um, it's bigger everywhere else on that uh, domain omega um, that we looked at before. I won't write that down just yet. And so in order to check stability or asymptotic stability and so forth, we need to look at v dot. We need to look at v dot, which is equal to the dot product of the gradient of uh, v with f of x. And so what do we get this time? Well, everything is almost exactly the same. So we have the same uh, gradient of v, so mgl sine x1 and ml squared x2. But we're dot producting this with essentially the same thing. So with what we had before, which was x2 and minus g over l sine x1 uh, plus our new damping piece which has got nothing here but it does have something here it's minus c over m x2 so we know when we did the dot product with this we got zero so all we need to do is take the dot product of this with this term here and we see that this is equal to minus c l squared x2 squared, which is less than zero if x2 is not equal to zero. And this was the problem. If you remember um, before, our domain omega was the set of points in our state space, x1 and x2, such that um, minus pi is less than x1 is less than pi, so the points corresponding to this set of angles here. Uh, and then we said x2, the size of x2 was just bounded. Um, and so now you see the problem we have here is that v dot is less than or equal to zero at every point omega, and it's less than zero as long as x2 is e not equal to zero, but it's quite possible for x2 to be equal to the zero and x1 to lie in this range here, so that there are points within omega for which we only get less than or equal rather than strictly less than or equal. So we can't conclude asymptotic stability. But now if we think about what is going to happen um, in this system, um, so we've got some, we've got a pendulum, but now we've got some damping. So with no damping, it would just oscillate backwards and forwards like this forever. But with some damping, every time it loses a little bit of energy, eventually it's going to settle down and be still. So this is a system that we would expect to be asymptotically stable. Yet, 
while the Lyapunov analysis isn't quite strong enough to prove asymptotic stability. And what LaSalle's invariant set theorem lets us do is sort of just stumble over the line and prove asymptotic stability in systems that almost satisfy the asymptotic stability requirement, but not quite. Um, so what is the LaSalle invariant set theorem? Well, let's, uh, let's just say, so let's just call it LaSalle. This is the LaSalle invariant set theorem says, um, let E, so we're going to define some other region of the state space, be the set of points in the state space such that V dot is equal to zero. And we'll give an example illustrating all of these terms um, soon. But for example, this would correspond to the values where x2 was equal to zero in our set omega. So let E be this set here. Uh, let's say with x in omega. So we look at all the values in the state space in our big set omega, and E is the subset of those values for which V dot is equal to zero. So these are the points where we're failing to satisfy our strict um, Lyapunov inequality and we only get less than or equal to. Uh, then uh, the LaSalle invariant set theorem says, so we have this E and let M be the largest invariant subset of E. So what does this mean? Um, we need to introduce the idea of an invariant subset, um, and this is always done with respect to a particular set of dynamics. So a set X, we say X is invariant with respect to a particular set of dynamics if x of 0 in x, so if we start at some point in our uh, set x, then our trajectory stays in x for all t greater than or equal to zero. So a set is said to be invariant with respect to um, a set of dynamics. If you, if you initialize it anywhere in this set, it will stay in there. So x would be invariant with respect to a particular set of dynamics. If no matter where I start, if I evolve my system over time, it would never leave that set x. So Vassal says, so given our set of points where our strictly Lyapunov inequality is not satisfied, let M be the largest invariant subset of E uh, and then with respect to x dot is equal to f of x. Then x of t tends to a point in M or it doesn't tend, it tends to the set M, it doesn't have to be a point, but x of t will end up in this set M as t goes to infinity. And the, the point here is that when we analyze these types of systems where we don't satisfy this strict um, inequality, what we can do is we can use the LaSalle invariant set theorem to show that this set M is just equal to the equilibrium point. And then, if that's the case, um, the LaSalle invariant set theorem will tell us that we tend to that set M, and if that set M happens to be our equilibrium point, then we manage to prove asymptotic stability without having the strict uh, inequality on V everywhere. And let's just uh, do that in the context of our example, just to, to explain what all of this means. Um, so here we have our system and our Lyapunov function this is all the stuff on the LaSalle invariant set theorem. Now let's do our example. 
So example, I guess, continued. So to apply this, the first thing we need to do is find E, and the second thing we need to do is find N. So what is E? E is just equal to the set of points x1, x2, such that v dot is equal to 0. And we already um, saw what that corresponded to here. So that corresponds to x2 is equal to 0. And um, minus pi is less than x1. It's less than pi. So this is the subset of omega for which v dot is equal to zero. So for any uh, non-zero value of x2, we get strictness here, and it's strictly less than zero, so it can't be equal to zero. And now we need to find the largest invariant set, m of e. So what does that mean? Um, so the set is invariant if, if we start at any point in there, we'll stay at the point in there. So how can we start to reason about this? Well, to reason about this, we have to look at our dynamical equation and see what the consequences are for starting um, at some point in, in this set E. So if we start in E, then, so if we start in E, then x2 is equal to zero. And so what does this imply? So we look at our dynamical equations here. If x2 is equal to zero, then x1 dot is equal to zero. And so uh, x1 is equal to some constant. And also, if x2 is equal to zero, then x dot x2 dot must be equal to zero. If x2 uh, dot is not equal to zero, then x2 will, as we evolve time, x2 will change from its zero value, and that would mean that we would leave this set. In E, x2 is always equal to zero. So it implies this, and x2 dot is equal to zero. Um, so what do these things imply? Well, if this is equal to zero, um, now let's just look at the second equation here. So it says that x2 dot, which is equal to zero, is equal to minus c over m, x2, but x2 is equal to zero. And then this thing we have, minus g over l sine x1. So this is, uh, the consequence of initializing our system in this set E, if we're going to stay in E, these must hold, which means this must, must hold, but this implies that x1 is equal to zero. The only remaining point in E where this relationship holds is when x1 is equal to zero. So this implies that the set M, so the invariant set of E with respect to the dynamics of our system is equal to zero, zero, which is equal to our equilibrium point. So now we have everything we need. We have a Lyapunov function that, in, that proves that v dot is less than or equal to zero everywhere. And on our set where v dot is equal to zero, the only, the largest invariant set M is equal to the equilibrium point, therefore by LaSalle, x of t is going to tend to M as t goes to infinity. That means x of t is going to tend to the equilibrium point in this case. And therefore, in addition, the system is asymptotically stable. If you go back and you look at the definition for asymptotic stability, you'll see that's exactly what it means. So LaSalle 